Uh, I want to touch on a couple of quick points here in relation to an understanding of the next few, few slides. Champion, uh, uh, sorry, ISIS has three main work streams to it. It has officer and citizen, which I've touched on. So we want to know what the officer and citizen needs and what they want. They are two different things. Needs, we can afford. Wants, we won't be able to. Hugh Ord recently stood up, the peasant of ACPO, and said at uh, an ISIS-related event, you've got to realise 80% is good enough now because we can't afford the bells and whistles anymore. Because if we're paying for the bells and whistles, that's cops coming off the front line. That's less time we have to spend with victims. So it's what you need, not necessarily what you want. And that's going to quite a strong cultural change in relation to uh, policing because it, we've always wanted the bells and whistles. And every time you add an extra field, every time you add an extra piece of complicated integration, that costs pounds, shillings and pence. So we've got the officer and citizen strand. We also have a procurement strand, which I've touched on earlier as well. And we're working towards uh, those national procurement contracts. We're working at rationalising what the existing ones that they are. We've been in conversation with a number of different companies. And I see that Robert's here from BT and is speaking later. And we have a BT portal, which I'm sure he'll touch on, around how we can maximise on the telephony benefits, buying as one whole service as opposed to buying 43 different times. <coughs> And the third, the third strand is the infrastructure strand, which I've also touched on as well. And um, um, from the initial work we've done on that, we presented to the Police IT Directors Forum up in Warwickshire about four or five weeks ago. And I know some of the colleagues in the audience were at that. And we said, we reckon we can take £35 million a year out of police IT by um, rationalising the infrastructure. And there was a huge challenge come back from the audience, both over coffee and June. And I thought, right, let's, let's see what this is about. They said, that's far too conservative. It's at least 50 million. You, and that was coming from the IT directors and forces. That was hugely encouraging for me because the IT directors have got the message. They've absolutely got the message in forces. There has to be an awful lot of work done, but they understand the benefits around this and how convergence and, convergence and consolidation, rationalisation and collaboration will actually take them forward and deliver local, local policing better and make the IT more cost effective and did make the IT better uh, as well. The as is and to be that they talk about with that. And we start off rightly with the public. So, 2009, a victim or witness, information and case progression can be difficult to access. Uh, so, if you're a victim of crime, how do you find out what's happening with your case? How do you do it? Who do you contact? Um, the ability for officers to tailor their service to different people is limited by lack of connected and real-time information. How does the officer on ground start making some real-time decisions around a very complex case when they don't have the luxury or time to actually do that? And online and mobile phone access to police services is limited by legacy technology, the back office stuff. So by 2015, we plan to have a national infrastructure and systems combined with the growing use of electronic case files this will mean that they can offer the public online access to see where their file actually is. Unique, unique reference number type approach. It's not going to show them the information in the file, but it'll tell them where the progressionary aspects are with this, this point in time. And we have to make that a completely joined up approach so that when the officer starts collecting the information and evidence and intelligence around an investigation, that that will be electronically moved through the criminal justice system right to the very end point in the courts. Only one place in Northern Ireland has taken that any uh, so only one place in the country has taken that further and that's Northern Ireland through the Causeway initiative and it's been incredibly complex around that. But we have to back engineer so that if the police do an electronic case system, that feeds into the uh, CPS electronic case system and that can feed forward then into the courts themselves. That has to be a joined up uh, approach and that's going to take an awful lot of work over the five years. Uh, Victims and witnesses can view case details well in advance of hearings. Better info means officers can tailor services, for example, when an offender is also a victim, which happens on occasions. Frontline officers, operational IT services are disconnected often, making it difficult and time-consuming to create a comprehensive view of an incident or a crime. Same data must be entered on multiple occasions. Jan has referred to that in her report, constantly entering data. How do we get the front-end engineered so it's simpler? Uh, you've all done it in your own personal lives when you've went through a whole rigmarole of putting your own information in and then it starts all over again whenever you enter another page or another system. It's incredibly frustrating. Imagine, try, imagine trying to do that on the ground when you've got a victim 
time's pressing, the golden hour in relation to your forensics is starting to run out on you, and your limited resources, and you've got to start re-entering again, and re-entering again, and then when you get back to the station, you've got to re-enter again. That's something that we've got to get rid of.